Attention please. This upload is only for educational purpose. No intention to infringe copyrights. Learning English with subtitles GPTRIL. GPTRIL. Definitely a must see. Follow us. Today's one-to-one -one reading took place while I was on my UK tour. I commandeered the corner of the theatre bar at the Manchester Opera House shortly before I went on stage and gave Chris an impromptu reading. Let's take a look and see what happened. My name's Chris Mann. I'm 45. I live and work in South Manchester and I work in IT support. I've been watching The Sixth Sense for about three weeks and decided that Colin was a really fascinating guy. I thought when I'd built up enough courage, I'd write a good hard sell email and everything happened very quickly after that. Before I knew it, there I was sitting in the theatre in Manchester waiting to hear some quite startling things come from Colin. Hello Chris. Hi Colin. And thank you very much for coming along today for this one-to-one -one session. But as we're sitting here, one of the things that's becoming very apparent to me is a, a feeling of someone trying to uh, impress themselves upon me. I know this is a gentleman that's trying to impress himself upon me. Mm -hmm. And he just keeps referring to you as son or sonny. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just saying to me, you've got to tell him, I had to go, as in mean pass over. I had to go suddenly. That meant that there were certain things that we never had a chance to say. This gentleman's giving me this feeling of a very strong affection for both you and your mum. Indeed, yeah. The person that Colin was describing as having a huge affection for both uh, myself and my mother um, was my father, who I lost um, when I was six years old. Great surprise, it, it was just not clear how the reading would go from there and, and, and what advice, if any, he would have for me. You must tell my boy, we should have had more time to have got to know one another. Mm but I have watched it. You don't seem like the type now, Chris, you seem sort of fairly okay and everything, but he's given me this feeling of a, which was, were you bullied? Yes. Because he's just like the, the, the saying to me, if I could have protected you from that, if I could have saved you from that, mm. I would have done, but I wasn't here, mm. because by then I'd gone. And he's also very much aware of the fact is that you never really wanted to bother your mum with the things that were going on in your life because you could see, until stepdad came along, she had more than she could cope with. That was quite shocking and uh, very personal um, because I was bullied and the bullying, bullying essentially started uh, not long after my father's death. And he was right to say that I shielded my mother from that even at uh, a very young age, so that was, that was really quite uh, intensely personal. And that, okay, despite all that, you turned out okay. Despite all that, you turned out okay. To be told that I had turned out okay was quite nice because um, I think when you're young and in your early teens, the fact of having been bullied can, you, can turn you into a bully, um, which is something I was always very keen not to do because I've hated that kind of thing from a, a very young age so I hope I've you know tried to keep myself uh, fairly focused since then. He's, he's showing me something that um, is difficult for him to talk about and it's difficult for me to talk about for him. It's an uncomfortable feeling but something that he gives me feeling must be addressed and he's saying you must tell my boy he went I know he went through an identity crisis. But now, son, you know who you are. Mm. And you are my boy. That is really quite personal. Um, but I will say that I could identify an identity crisis in my early 20s, uh, which I would say had been resolved by the end of my 20s, but it's something that very, very few people would have known about, only the people very close to me. And it's just like this feeling I wanted to say, I have been with you throughout the course of your life. 
I went through you through the worst years, through the bullying, the intimidation. I was with you through the years when you were down and thought that there was nothing to live for. It is a nice thing to be told and it makes sense of all kinds of things because I have been through some very dark periods and always uh, emerged reasonably unscathed so it's nice to think that I didn't go through that journey alone really. What on earth do you keep all these papers for? You just don't like throwing anything away do you? Are you also the one that hoards magazines? Sometimes yeah. I'm seeing stacks and stacks of American comics yeah. so I don't know if that was something that you were interested in or have been interested in but I just see stacks and stacks of American comics. And I just got the feeling that this man's trying to show me something from when you were a boy. Yeah. Like, you've always been a hoarder. Yeah. That relates to just about any kind of paperwork that uh, ever comes into my life. He correctly identified that I do collect lots of magazines in the past. I used to collect a great deal more than I do now, but I have a huge pile of comic books in my, uh, in my study uh, to this day. Is Mum still with us this side of life? Indeed. OK, all right. I have no idea what sort of age your mother is, but what I'm being shown is she's always said that she wants to see you do something in life. And you just start saying, son, how much longer are you going to keep her waiting? She wants to see something happen in your life. There's that thing. I've got the feeling she's been talking about this to you for at least the last 15 years. And don't keep her waiting any longer. When Colin said, how much longer are you going to make a wait? I almost felt as though I was having my wrist slapped because um, it's a clear reference to her wanting to see me get married and I think wanting to be a, a grandma for a second time. Who's John? My uncle who I never met. Because we're all here. There seems to be several others here. Let me say, as much as we give our love to you, you must make sure that your mum knows that we send our love to her as well. And for today, I think that's all that they have to say. And I'm very happy to leave their love with you. Thank you, Colin. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's quite startling to come out of a, a short meeting with someone for the first time who knows so much about you already. And I have to say that as I left the theatre, I was a little bit dazed, a little bit dazed. All right, my love, OK. I, I've, I've got a, um, a, a young lady, a young uh, lady trying to connect through to me. Um, and as she's trying to connect through to me, I, I just get the feeling from her that she'd put up a really, really brave fight against uh, a cancer condition. And as the cancer condition developed, she had a period of respite for a short period, and then the, the, the cancer flared again. Does this make some sense to you? Yeah, she was ill from a baby. It was cancer. Right, OK. Why is she putting in front of me 23, That's please? Outrageous. Right, she's just put 23 in front of me. I have to ask a question here because I need to be careful about how I, how I present this message. What is your relationship to her? Cousin. You're her cousin. We got to do the party and that made it worthwhile. It was after... After she died? Or? After. All right, we got to do the party and that made it worthwhile. Now, I got the feeling that she wants you to know that even though she had passed, she had been there. Who's Julie or Julia? That's her sister-in-law. Could you understand or be able to pass on the message that she's really pleased for what's going on for Julie, Julia, at the moment? I can tell her. I'm not sure. Okay. Really pleased for something that's going on at the moment. All right. Some like good news, something that's happened that's, that's positive that the family are going to be happy about, or the family should be happy about. Unless she's pregnant again. Then <laughs> 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 she just hasn't said. I don't know. What on earth is she doing this for? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was um, my dad and my husband used to dance like that. <laughs> There's like a joke in it, she's saying it like between you and her. Did you used to take the mickey out of these, these blokes doing this? I skit at my dad and my husband's doing it, yeah. But she said, do you know what this means? <laughs> she used I'm to not entirely sure I want to know what it means, but, <laughs> all right. She used to um, dance with my husband 
Just but just, you can understand. And I've got the feeling that you and I like, actually... took the mickey out of it. Yeah. All right. She's okay. To, used to tease each All other. All right. 30 will be good. I'm 30 in January. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're not looking forward to it, are you? No. Because she just asked me to say, say to her, 30 will be good. I'll leave your cousin's love with you, darling. Thanks. God bless. I felt my heart go and bang, 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 bang. <laughs> it was... It took my breath away, basically. I wasn't expecting it at all. She'd put up a really, really brave fight against uh, a cancer condition. I realised it was um, my cousin. As soon as he said a young girl who'd been fighting cancer, simply because she'd had it from a baby. Her name was Nikki Griffiths. She was 23. She loved going out drinking, partying. Yeah, she used to work in a nightclub. She was just so outgoing. She used to be life and soul of the party. Yeah, she'd be the first one up dancing. We got to do the party and that made it worthwhile. After she died, we had a, um, so like a charity night for her. It was called Nikki's Night at the club she used to work at. Um, I had a lot of local bands and a boyfriend was in one of the bands and we raised a lot of money, you know, for um, kidney research and cancer and that. Um, it was a brilliant night, actually. Uh, but I'm glad that she was there. Um, yeah, it meant a lot. What on earth is she doing this for? <laughs> she used to tease um, my dad and my husband, because they're the ones who used to do this silly dance. Um, so, and I used to tease them as well. When she used to come into the club and they'd be doing it, she'd start it as well, you see. So I think that's probably where the teasing comes into it. 30 will be good. It's my birthday in January, I'm 30. And I'm, I'm really not looking forward to it. Um, and I was actually mentioning that on, you know, on, the way, on the way down here. I was talking about that in the car. And um, she, she's right, I'm not looking forward to it. I don't want to be there. I'll leave your cousin's love with you, darling. Thanks. God bless. Before I come here, um, I did sort of believe, but Colin's just confirmed everything to me. You know, there is life after death, and Nicky's around to watch over us, basically. Just made up about that, yeah. My name's Colin Fry. You've joined me today here on The Sixth Sense. Please join me again sometime soon. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. When you see something on TV, uh, it's easy to believe that the use of camera angles and editing and people who you don't know in the audience could contribute to making someone appear to have talents that they don't actually have and I'm very skeptical about all sorts of things like this anyway. The question in my mind was is there any way that you can get close enough to someone to be sure about how they do things and the closest you can get is about two feet apart which is what we were during the reading. <laughs>